in this final week of of as we approach Christmas, and especially when the times of the O antiphons, the emphasis is really upon the um, the days preceding the incarnation. It really focuses in on the conception of our Lord and those events that took place before the nativity, because of course the conception and the birth are always connected. You know, we it's a, it's a obvious biological connection and it's also a spiritual connection in that uh, theologically that um, the word is conceived and then he is born and and the reason we know that his conception is miraculous is because the birth is miraculous for the ancients conception and birth were all part of the same moment and so we have at the these days before Christmas focusing on of, as I said, our Lord's being conceived in Our Lady's womb at the Annunciation and the mysteries that took place within the womb already. You know, in this interior little world of two children in their mother's womb already convey and work out the mystery of salvation. Our Lord is already sanctifying John while still in his mother's womb. And today we focus on Our Lady's Magnificat, because the Magnificat is really that litany of, it's a hymn of humility. Our Lady is singing the praises of God. God has, my soul magnifies the greatness of the Lord, she says, you know, in the Latin translation. And she is doing nothing but praising how much God has blessed her and how in her lowliness, God has come to her and given her the greatest thing that God can give to us. You know, there was this billboard someone sent me someplace in New York, I guess. Someone put up a, a big billboard said, uh, keep the Mary and had a picture of Santa and get rid of the myth and had Christ on the cross as if somehow some atheist thought that that Christmas would be more merry if we got rid of this whole idea of Jesus on the cross and that that's somehow the myth. Well, the problem is that, of course, atheists can't get anything right because they don't even know that God exists, first of all. But they are losing the whole point why Christmas has any significance is because that greatest gift of Christ, the child of, of Bethlehem, being given to us to be sacrificed, there would be no merrymaking, there would be no gift-giving if Christ had not died on the cross. The foundation of Santa Claus, the real Saint Nicholas, is based upon the fact the reason why he did charity to others and saw people in their lowly condition and gave them gifts to help them was because he was inspired because of Christ on the cross, the greatest sacrificial gift that God could could give to man. And so the gift giving is not at all um, a um, uh, missing the point of Christmas. It's the problem is the atheist missed the biggest point, the biggest gift. The reason why we have any merrymaking is because God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to be our gift, the gift of on the cross. And we can um, look at this and, and, you know, the whole, you know, the um, responsorial psalm today says, My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. That, you know, I wonder how many people today even think that they need a Savior. A Savior means someone is saved. Someone needed to be saved. And I'm, I'm afraid that many people today, because they've lost the sense of sin, don't think they need to be saved from anything. That's because they're not humble and because they don't uh, recognize that um, the biggest need that we have as mankind is grace. And that grace can only be obtained if our Lord came and died for us on the cross. That's because grace means gift. And that's why we celebrate any kind of gift giving at Christmas is because the greatest gift we could not, we did not deserve. And so 
As we look at uh, approaching the days of Christmas, which will soon be here, we need to look at what is needed to be a good foundation to be able to receive that gift. And of course, it is given to us in these days before, in the example of Our Lady, the importance of humility. That is the foundation for receiving any gift. And um, that is the beginning because it says in the readings from the office of readings the other day, it said that to the degree that we are living a virtuous life, pure and chaste, then we will magnify the Lord. If we try to remove sin from our lives, then the, the magnification of God will shine out through us. But uh, sad to say we live in a world today that, that doesn't recognize that and um, in many cases does everything it can to mar the image of God in man. This is the, the thing that's probably the, the saddest uh, commentary on our society today is because we don't see our need for Christ, because we're not humble, and because we have uh, forgotten that we're made in the image and likeness of God, and what is it that makes us reflect that image and likeness most perfectly is when we're in grace. And um, it's, you know, the, what man needs more is to be practicing uh, his faith and to be seeking that grace. You know, the, the big thing today, you know, with, because of this terrible thing that happened in Connecticut, is that the government somehow thinks that they need to control more of our lives. It's not, we don't need gun control or government control. We need self-control. And the only way we can have self-control is if we have grace. And the only way we can get grace is if we're humble enough to say, well, I'm not the master of everything. I need God's help. I need to get down on my knees and ask God for help. And, um, the, the, you know, this is um, really the whole sad state of affairs, you know. And it's not because there's too many violent TV programs on TV. I grew up with watching all kinds of Lone Ranger and combat and everything. But I didn't think that my problems were going to be solved to go and take a gun and shoot somebody. It's because they didn't have any parental control. He didn't have any parental family structure there that he could see that he had some other way of finding a solution to his problem than to go and find a way to, to shoot people. This is, um, you know, and this is the part of the problem with our country is that it's not with its physical infrastructure. The problem is with our spiritual infrastructure is missing and is falling apart because we are enacting laws and doing things and making immoral practices as if it's commonplace and acceptable. That's the problem that is existing and that's the key to the, to the solution is not more governmental control or gun control. It's more people doing and acting according to the way God has made them. It's called following the Ten Commandments, and we don't need the government to tell us to do that. We need parents, and we need uh, people who are strong families, as G.K. Chesterton keeps reminding us that the central focus is the family, and the government should not be interfering in the family. It should be supporting the family, and maybe the biggest support it can give them is to stay out. But... Uh, this is the problem today. We need to look to the Holy Family. We need to look to God for the solutions. And if we don't look to God, we will always look for the wrong solution. We'll look for an easy solution, but it isn't the real solution. You know, that's the problem with um, the way we are uh, confronting things today. We need to pray we need to look to this mystery of Christmas that we're going to be celebrating, that the child at Bethlehem has the answers, and he's given us the means to solve the problems in our society, and they're not as difficult as we'd like to make them out to be. The first thing we need to do is have the humility to turn to God, 
like Our Lady, you know, and thank Him for all that He has done for us, and then to humbly follow God's will, and then we will magnify God, and we will be living in the image and likeness of God, and we will, therefore, be practicing virtue, and we will have that self-control and that means to have God controlling our lives because we are acting in, in union with Him. Let us pray today and ask Our Lady in a special way to teach us that secret of wisdom, which is being humble, seeing that we are not all the, the center of the world, but that God is, and that we must follow His path and do things His way and not our way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.